Are you suffering from diabetes? Then I am Dr. Osman Zafar and in my interview I will be answering the questions regarding this condition. What exactly is type 1 diabetes and how does it differ from type 2? Well, type 1 diabetes uh, is a subtype of this condition and uh, in this condition, uh, in, in, in this type, there is absolute deficiency of insulin production in the body. The cells which are uh, uh, given this duty to produce uh, insulin, they are basically destroyed in this condition and it, it is different from type 2 where there is a resistance to the action of insulin which is produced in the body. Why does our body stop producing insulin in type 1 and what are the early signs and symptoms to watch out for? In type 1 diabetes, as I told earlier, it is the destruction of the beta cells. The beta cells are the ones uh, producing insulin in our pancreas and they are destroyed and the patient's body is unable to produce insulin which is required for metabolism of glucose. How essential is insulin for people with type 1 diabetes? And what different types of insulin injections or pumps are available? Insulin is an absolutely essential uh, component that should be present in a human's body for its proper functioning. And if a patient is suffering from type 1 diabetes, there is an absolute deficiency of this, uh, this substance. And then we have to inject insulin from the outside and there are different types of insulin uh, injections available through which uh, a patient can be treated. Uh, some of them act very rapidly and they are called rapid acting insulins. Others have an intermediate uh, sort of action, intermediate uh, acting insulins and then there are the longer acting insulins which can act for up to 24 or 36 hours. How do you determine the proper insulin dosage and what factors can affect how the body absorbs it? Uh, the proper dose of insulin is determined uh, through, a, through a hit and trial method and we have cer certain algorithms uh, on the basis of which we start and start with an initial dose of insulin for our patient based upon the patient's weight, his age or his level of obesity and then we, we can titrate the insulin dose according to the response a patient gives to those injections. Why is frequent blood sugar monitoring crucial for managing type 1 diabetes and what are the different monitoring devices and techniques? Frequent monitoring is necessary in, uh, in diabetes, especially in type 1 diabetes because uh, the physiological glucose level is uh, maintained in a very narrow range and when we are giving insulin from the outside then this level has to be mimicked and for that purpose uh, we need to uh, monitor it uh, regularly and frequently so that uh, we can take measures to keep this level of uh, glucose in a very narrow range. So there are certain devices which are used for this purpose. There is uh, one method of uh, finger prick test uh, for glucose uh, in which definitely there is a discomfort. A uh, patient uh, will have to uh, prick his finger with a needle and then test his blood sugar levels. And there are newer devices in which a machine is attached to the body through a needle which is inserted in the subcutaneous tissue and then we can have a continuous or near continuous monitoring of blood glucose levels. How do you interpret blood sugar readings and what actions should you take based on high or low levels? It depends uh, what instructions a patient's physician has given to him or her and then uh, if there are higher levels then we can increase the dose of insulin accordingly and for lower levels we have to reduce the insulin dose. Low levels of uh, uh, glucose are uh, harmful for the body and hypoglycemia is not a good condition to have. So one should be very careful, especially if uh, the glucose levels are falling uh, below the physiological limit and then the patient should consult his or her physician. What role does a healthy diet plan in managing type 1 diabetes and what types of foods should be prioritized or avoided? A healthy diet is very, very essential for management of diabetes and diabetes, especially type 2 diabetes, is a lifestyle disease. And in this condition, uh, a balanced diet uh, according to the given instructions by one's dietitian or nutritionist should be used by the patient. Uh, 
the essential elements of a balanced diet for diabetics are uh, reduction in uh, carbohydrate levels, especially the uh, carbohydrate levels with high glycemic index, including uh, pure sugars and bakery products and juices and uh, other beverages. Uh, they should be avoided. Uh, those diets which can be taken easily uh, and uh, favorably in this condition are the whole grains, uh, nuts, uh, a quantity of nuts, uh, vegetables, and some of the fruits. How important is regular exercise for managing type 1 diabetes? And what types of physical activity are recommended? In diabetes, usually for healthy adults, we recommend uh, a daily exercise dose of 30 minutes per day. This should be a moderate intensity exercise uh, which include uh, very brisk walking at, at the rate of 120 steps per minute or more uh, or, or jogging and then uh, weight training at least uh, two to three times uh, per week. So uh, 150 minutes per week of uh, aerobic exercise and about 90 minutes per week of uh, this uh, weight based exercises, they can be done in diabetes. What are some common emotional and psychological challenges faced by people with type 1 diabetes and how can they cope with them? Emotionally, uh, the patients of diabetes mellitus are challenged with, uh, with the condition itself, knowing that, that one is having a condition which is permanent and he has to uh, take care of his food and physical activity on a daily basis and taking medicines daily. This is a big emotional challenge usually for, for patients. Secondly, uh, they, they can be an associated stigma as well sometimes and patients can uh, face discrimination at, at the job interviews for example or uh, at the time of marriage when, uh, when a patient can be uh, possibly rejected uh, because of having diabetes. So these are the social issues which a diabetic can uh, confront. Another thing is that diabetes is associate, associated with a degree, with a higher degree of uh, of depression than general general population. So, we should, when we evaluate patients with diabetes mellitus, we do evaluate them for underlying depression and anxiety. Then, needle phobias is another problem. Uh, those who are on insulin, especially, uh, so they have those needle phobias, which sometimes need to be overcome therapeutically so that uh, they can go for the appropriate treatment which they need. Uh, psychological help can be sought in this condition. Uh, patients uh, can be referred to uh, the psychologist and they can help uh, patients cope with, the, with their condition. And then uh, we can have patient help groups, uh, support groups in the form of patient uh, peer groups and uh, groups of other patients who can share their experiences and how easy it was uh, to go through a particular process, for example, going through the process of starting insulin. So these things can be used. How can technology and support systems help people with type 1 diabetes manage their condition effectively and remain optimistic? Uh, nowadays we have uh, we've got continuous glucose monitoring devices uh, which can uh, save a patient from regular pricking of their fingers. Uh, then there are insulin pumps uh, which can be attached uh, to patient's belly and uh, patients can uh, can just manage their uh, sugar levels by pressing a few buttons. So, and, and there are uh, another, other devices as well which can do it for the patients themselves. So, technology has really improved the management uh, of this condition, and now patients can control their glycemic levels in a very narrow range. With ongoing research and advancements in medical technology, what promising developments are expected to improve the lives of people with type 1 diabetes in the future? As far as development of uh, new therapies is concerned, then uh, this bariatric surgery uh, has a curative role uh, in treatment of early type 2 diabetes and obese patients with type 2 diabetes can go through this process if indicated clinically. Uh, then there is a uh, role of uh, transplants, so newer options of uh, islet cell transplants and pancreatic transplants, so they can help cure this condition. Then, then there is uh, a role of newer targeted therapies which can uh, delay or uh, prevent the onset of uh, type 1 diabetes which is an autoimmune uh, condition.